Let's continue talking about greenhouse gases. What you're looking at here is a little table um, that you can copy for yourself. Um, I don't think you need to necessarily memorize the numbers, but you should know their, their relative abundances. So we've got five of the major greenhouse gases listed in your first column there. And then we're gonna go through their concentrations and something called their GWP or global warming potential, as well as their persistence. So going down that first column, again, we don't have to memorize the numbers because they are changing. The, like the carbon dioxide number changes on a, on a daily basis. Um, but what's interesting or what's of note with regards to carbon dioxide is this is a very, very high number, uh, 422 parts per million. That means for every million molecules of air, 422 of those million are carbon dioxide. This is a very, very high number. Like back in the day when I was your age, we were only in the 300s. And so that means that we're adding more carbon dioxide to the atmosphere, which means with additional carbon dioxide in the atmosphere, it's trapping more heat and warming the planet. So global warming potential, this middle column here, that is looking at basically how much heat these gases can trap compared to carbon dioxide. Carbon dioxide is kind of like our, our baseline and we compare everything else to carbon dioxide. And so just kind of pulling all these up, notice chlorofluorocarbons, CFCs, the ones that are solely created by humans. They have a very, very, very high global warming potential. Um, I do want you to note uh, maybe this one number you should know, nitrous oxide, N2O, has a global warming potential of 300. So what that means is that one molecule of nitrous oxide can trap 300 times more heat than one molecule of carbon dioxide. That's, that's significant. Um, obviously, CFC is huge, um, but nitrous oxide is a good number to know. Um, and then that last column looking at persistence, like how long does it stay in the atmosphere? And again, it varies. You don't need to memorize these numbers. Um, you know, water up in the atmosphere, it's going to cycle very quickly. Um, it's going to condense and come down as precipitation and go through the water cycle. So these, these numbers, not necessarily important to know all of them, but you do need to understand what global warming potential is, and you need to understand persistence is an important factor when we're talking about global warming as well. Um, so when we look, <clears throat> excuse me, when we look at the total effect down here at the bottom of the slide, the total effect of these greenhouse gases, what we're considering is their warming potential and their concentration, as well as their persistence, how long they stay in the atmosphere for. And so all of those things combined together are gonna, that's what is affecting the climate. Um, so what we're gonna go through here on these next chunk of slides is gonna be uh, sources of greenhouse gases. This is just a photo of some gas bubbles that are trapped in a frozen lake. And we'll talk about those gas bubbles uh, shortly. Um, before I get into, I forgot to change this, before I get into sources of greenhouse gases, I would like to mention here, um, volcanic eruptions, you know, when they are releasing a lot of ash, as you can see in that photo, um, ash does have a very strong reflective uh, property. So that means when, if there are times on the planet when there's a lot of volcanic activity and a lot of ash reaching the atmosphere, that actually ends up cooling the whole planet. So many, many hundreds of uh, millions of years ago, when there was a high volcanic activity on the planet, we ended up with a, a cooling effect. Um, even when, uh, what is that volcano I'm thinking of? Anytime there's a large volcanic eruption, I can't think of one particular volcano name. Um, anytime there's a large volcanic eruption, and a lot of ash is released, that can have an impact on overall climate because that ash is gonna block a lot of radiation, which means we're not gonna heat the planet. All right, so let's talk about sources of greenhouse gases. Let's move on. Um, 
natural processes, decomposition, digestion, decay, whatever word you want to use. So as dead things break down, or organic matter, carbon dioxide is released during the process of decomposition. And carbon dioxide is a greenhouse gas, of course. However, if there's not a lot of oxygen in the environment where things are being decomposed, then the bacteria that are doing the decomposition um, will switch to like a slightly different method of decomposition and they will release methane instead of carbon dioxide. So both of these, CO2 and CH4, both of them are greenhouse gases. However, think about which one is worse for the environment. Go back and think and look at the table and look at the global warming potential and the persistence. Methane traps more heat than carbon dioxide does. So whenever we're producing high amounts of methane, that is adding to uh, the global warming potential on the planet. So decomposition is one natural method process that produces greenhouse gases. Sources of methane in nature, wetlands, because there's a heck of a lot of decomposition happening in a wetland, like what we have in our backyards pretty much here in the Everglades, and termite mounds actually. Uh, termites do produce a lot of methane in their, in their daily activities. Another natural process that releases greenhouse gases is something called denitrification, which is a step in the nitrogen cycle, which we haven't covered yet. That's part of unit one. Um, so just for now, understand that a process in the nitrogen cycle called denitrification releases nitrous oxide. And nitrous oxide has a very high global warming potential. Another natural process that releases greenhouse gases, gases, part of the water cycle, evaporation and evapotranspiration, which is basically evaporation from plant leaves. Um, they are both releasing water vapor. Water vapor is actually a pretty strong greenhouse gas, but because it doesn't last very long and it cycles quickly, we're not super concerned with water vapor because water vapor is always moving uh, from one location to another, one phase, you know, going from uh, water vapor to liquid water and things like that. All right, so now we're gonna get into human sources of greenhouse gases or anthropogenic sources of greenhouse gases. Burning fossil fuels. What is a fossil fuel? Coal oil, natural gas. We burn fossil fuels to make electricity. We burn fossil fuels in the gasoline in our cars. So burning fossil fuels is gonna release carbon dioxide, which is a greenhouse gas. It's gonna release some methane, greenhouse gas. It's gonna release nitrous oxide. So producing electricity from fossil fuels is gonna add greenhouse gases to the atmosphere which is gonna warm the planet. Um, also on this slide, you can see I wrote PM lowers albedo. Like what does all that mean? Particulate matter, you know, tiny little particles. They are going to lower albedo. Albedo is how reflective a surface is. Like snow and ice have high albedo, they're very reflective. Uh, something dark like asphalt has a low albedo, it absorbs instead of reflects. Um, so the more particulates that we have in the atmosphere, you know, dark little pieces, you know, soot and stuff like that, they are going to absorb a lot of heat and warm the planet. And where does that particulate matter come from? Burning fossil fuels. Particulate matter is not a gas, tiny little, almost invisible little specks, but they are absorbing a lot of heat. Another source of greenhouse gases is agriculture, farming of both animals and plants. Um, so when we overwater our croplands and we, we waterlog our soil, uh, the bacteria that are living in the soil end up producing a lot of methane. Um, also crops that require a lot of water like rice, uh, growing rice produces a lot of methane. Um, that was a question on a released exam once, a multiple choice question. 
So rice cultivation or growing rice releases a lot of methane. Um, fertilization, you know, adding fertilizers to our crops so they grow bigger, better, faster, stronger. Um, fertilizers often have a lot of nitrogen in them. And remember I had mentioned previously, uh, denitrification releases nit nitrous oxide into the atmosphere. So the more nitrogen I'm adding to my crops, the more denitrification there will eventually be, which means more nitrous oxide going into the atmosphere. Um, and then the animals themselves, like cows, they release a lot of methane. Um, we tend to think of it as like cow farts being really bad for the environment, but technically it's not. It's actually their burps um, because of the way a cow's stomach is structured into different chambers. They're not like fully digesting their food and, you know, really, really gassy animals and they burp up a lot of methane. And obviously the more cows we have on the planet, you know, for eating purposes, the more methane is going to be produced. Another human activity that affects greenhouse gases is going to be cutting down of trees, deforestation, because trees are going to be taking in carbon dioxide. That's the process of photosynthesis. So if we cut down the trees, there's going to be less photosynthesis. So that means we're leaving carbon dioxide in the atmosphere, and carbon dioxide is a greenhouse gas. Um, we sometimes burn the trees down, which releases particulates, you know, soot, and that soot again traps heat. Um, and also setting the, the forest on fire produces nitrous oxide and methane, pretty much all that stuff. Um, landfills release a lot of methane. That's all part of unit eight, but just for now, as things are decomposing in a landfill, there's not a lot of oxygen present. So that decomposition will release a lot of methane. And then CFCs, chlorofluorocarbons, are a uh, greenhouse gas, traps a lot of heat. And those CFCs come from uh, refrigerants, like for air conditioning units and aerosol spray cans and stuff like that. Uh, so just looking at sources of methane here, biggest sources, burning fossil fuels, farming, landfills. And then looking at nitrous oxide, biggest sources, farming, fossil fuels. Are you noticing a trend here? Fossil fuels and agriculture tend to cause a lot of these problems. Um, fossil fuels for carbon dioxide production. Oh, look at that. Fossil fuels again. So like, what does this all mean? Kind of tying it all together. Um, all of these greenhouse gases, as we're adding greenhouse gases to the atmosphere, they are warming the planet. So we have excess greenhouse gases. You should pause it and see if you can fill in the rest of the boxes. Those excess greenhouse gases are going to lead to climate change, global warming. Uh, as the planet is getting hotter, sea levels are going to rise. Um, ice sheets are going to melt. Sea levels rise, not only because of melting ice, but also something called thermal expansion. Water expands as it gets hotter. Um, as the planet gets warmer, things like mosquitoes, which carry diseases, are going to spread from tropical areas into other places where they may not have existed. Um, as other places get warmer, we're going to see more and more warm diseases moving into new locations, um, which means we're going to have changes in human populations, period. And all of that we're going to get into in other parts of Unit 9 pretty much throughout the year. Um, so, have you any questions on nine point, what was this, nine point through, no, five and six, three and four, whatever this one was. If you have any questions about greenhouse gases, you know, let me know, and uh, ta-ta for now.